As security, national and internal security continues to agitate the minds of Nigerians, a lot of us are looking towards the Nigeria police uh, to see just what is going on. Are we building capacity? What are we doing to ensure that our police is also able to stand up to the challenges confronting Nigeria at this time? We have with us this morning Mohamed Megari Dinyadi, who is the Minister for Police Affairs. You're welcome to Sunrise Daily. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure meeting you. Same here, sir. Um, it's very interesting times that we're in. And largely, uh, some people are saying one of the ministries that was initially scrapped uh, but later on brought back again is the right. ministry which you currently head, very which well. is the Ministry of Police Affairs. And it was done so that uh, it could give life again to see him be a voice for the Nigeria police. Uh, what, given the challenges that we're facing at this time, what are some of the measures that your ministry is putting in place to help build the capacity of the police? You see, like uh, you rightly said, the whole essence of establishing this ministry is to give policy support and administrative support to the police force in this country to ensure that uh, we improve the service of the police, particularly in the areas of protection of lives and property, in the areas of maintaining peace and security of Nigerians in this country. That is the entire essence. When Mr. President re-established the Ministry of Police Affairs in 2019, uh, he made it very clear to us that uh, he specifically brought back the ministry to ensure that it becomes in tune with its objective of providing security in this country. And uh, we, uh, we started from the beginning, from the scratch, and uh, I thank God that we have so far come of age and we are working assiduously to ensure that we provide the needed leadership that is required to ensure that uh, we re-equip, we redesign, we give proper leadership to the police force in this country so that they can perform better than what they were doing before. Come of age as a ministry, is that what you mean, or come of age as, as a police force? As a ministry, force? as a ministry, because you are aware that we started from scratch, we started from nowhere. When I came in, there was no budget for the ministry, there was nobody there, I had to even gather the staff that are going to manage the place. We, we almost worked for over six months without a budget. And now, uh, that's very interesting because, yes. I mean, as you rightly pointed out, yes. the, the ministry was re-established. Right. Um, it meant that it, well, it was in existence before. What happened to the staff that used to work you know, with the ministry? It was merged out of the Ministry of Interior. Indeed. And they took most of the staff, most of the vehicles, most of the furniture, and we were left with uh, uh, most of the a few scrap that were there. And... Uh, I had to look for a permanent secretary. I had to look for so many other directors to start set the ball rolling. Mm. But we are now fully on ground, and uh, we are providing the needed leadership services that's required mm -hmm. to ensure that we support the police. How big a challenge would you say it was, considering the fact that largely, even though the police is saddled with internal security, uh, oftentimes when serious serious um, internal security challenges come up. A lot of people do not look towards the police anymore. They are asking for military intervention. Uh, to your mind, how big a challenge is that for us to now refocus again on our Nigeria police? You see, if you look at the history of security in this country, one will agree that uh, it's really a big challenge. From the way the issue started, uh, the government at that time had to use the army to go to the south, uh, northeast, to quell some of these insurgencies. And uh, since then, the situation has been like that, and uh, it has really been quite overwhelming for the police. And uh, but we are managing the situation. Uh, we are doing the best that we can to provide the needed support to the police, to the civil authority, so that we will have as much as possible the needed peace that is required for the country to move forward. 
Well, you have heard the president tell his service troops before, at least before he removed the ones he removed, that he, when he, they say they're doing their best, it says, yes, but your best is not, not good it's enough. Not, it's not good enough, it's, yes. It's, which is where a lot of Nigerians, you know, find their security agencies. Yes. That, yes, you might be doing your best, but it's not good enough. Yeah, as I, long as we're not able to travel freely, as long as, you know, criminals are on the loose and we're not able to apprehend them, as long as we're not able to get help when we need it, I mean, we, we definitely cannot be saying that the security agencies are giving us you their see, best. You see, I agree with you. I'm not saying we are given the best. Yes. We are given the little that we can. It is not the best, like Mr. President said. But we, we are doing also what is within the limit of what we can do to provide the needed services that will ensure that... What are the things limiting us? Where are we? Why you, are we being you, limited? You, you see, throughout history, if, if you look at the performance of the police in this country... There is this serious funding gap that has been there. Uh, they have been relying on the federal government budget, which is not enough to equip, to train, and to manage the police. Uh, you see, uh, unlike the military or the other paramilitary agencies, such as immigration, customs, and civil defense, the Nigerian police in this country we have about 380,000 personnel. We have about 380,000 personnel. And uh, we are everywhere in this country. We are in every nook and cranny of this country. We have uh, the, 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 the national structure at the Abuja level. We have the zonal commands, about 17 zones. We have about 37 state commands. We have uh, police divisions in every local government in this country. We also have police personnel in almost every district in this country. In fact, in, some, in, in quite a number of villages. So, so you can see the vast uh, uh, number of places where we occupy. Some people have said that that in itself is, not a, enough. is a problem. Yes. It's it not is. enough. The personnel is exactly. not enough. 370,000. Yes. We yes. always hear uh, every time a new IG is appointed, he wants to take away because one of the accusations is that political office holders uh, have taken a huge number of the of the men to, to themselves, so their own personal security. And over and over again, we hear that of the number that is not enough, you know, the police is about to withdraw those people from the public servants. Uh, and oftentimes, it's usually done only in in word. It's never implemented in action. No, no, you see, some of you may say it is never implemented, but whenever there is that serious need, mm -hmm. we withdraw the service of the policemen from this kind of people you are talking about. Just about two months ago, when this NSAS protest uh, started, we withdrew quite a number of policemen from public uh, officers to do poli real police duties. Have they not so, gone back? Have they not gone back since? Well, some of them have, but many of them have not gone back. Okay. Yes. Well, in the numbers that are not enough, mm. largely we talk about ungoverned spaces in this country. I mean, yes. it's a problem. But yes. some people even say the size, the behemoth that is the Nigeria police doesn't make it agile enough to respond to, you know, the, the challenges. I mean, people talk about how it is that somewhere in my village, you know, it's very far away. You, see, you have to get orders from Abuja, and that particular structure makes it really heavy for the police to be able no, to, you see, to be nimble. Uh, every policeman on ground should know what he is supposed to do without having to wait for any command from Abuja. I don't think that is correct. But the problem is not just the number itself. Uh, it is also the issue of equipment. It is also the issue of technology. Uh, because you cannot perform effectively without these things. Uh, if you go to other developing countries, you will discover that you don't see many policemen on the street. They use the modern day technology to check crimes, to investigate crimes, and, and, and uh, to, to fight crimes. So, so what, what we need in addition to the larger number of policemen in this country, is we need more equipment, we need more vehicles, we need more money to maintain these vehicles, we need uh, money to purchase equipment to fight these criminalities. Mm -hmm. And that is what we are trying to do at this moment.
Well, one of the things that came up, uh, I, I'm sure that you must have studied very closely right. uh, the, the complaints that le led to the NSAS protests, which to a large extent exposed the soft underbelly of the Nigeria police. Uh, what has been your own personal assessment of what transpired and um, what have you come to? What, what conclusions have you, you come you to? You see, actually, this issue of NSAS protest, like you know, started with uh, all sense of seriousness, with all sense of uh, uh, the desire to listen to them. Government was all out ready to listen, and uh, it was a kind of a genuine protest, so to say. And uh, government was all out ready and willing and determined to listen. Mr. President had to give specific directives to all the demands that they brought about. But unfortunately, as the process went on, we all saw what went wrong. These things were taken over by some people who do not mean well for this country. And uh, it erupted into something different that was about to lead to a kind of anarchy. So uh, many people were saying the police were overwhelmed. Yes, they were overwhelmed because of what actually happened, because of the pressure. We had never had that kind of thing for a very long time. And uh, a lot of pressure from outside, from within the country, uh, were, were putting, being put on the police to ensure that they don't overact on these issues. So sometimes some of these things you have to use some minimum level of force, at least physical force, to contain some of them. But the police were prevented from all these things just out of our desire to ensure that uh, we portray this country as a democratic rule, as a democratic government. Mr. President has always been agitating for rule of law, and we thought we should respect these principles. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's why uh, you have seen a lot of decorum in the way police have been handling these issues. Let's go to Lagos now and uh, take questions from my colleagues. Chimbley. Yes, well, so when you say the police is overstretched and they're not enough out there, uh, some of the governors have equally said they don't think we can police the country centrally from Abuja. The vice president has equally echoed the same views. Would you subscribe to that? Perhaps if the police is decentralized, and then it could be perhaps managed differently and achieve more results. What do you think about that? You see, this administration of President Mohammed Fahari is a people-oriented administration. It's a government that listens to the views of all Nigerians. But uh, what we have at the moment is, is, is a national police. Our laws are provided for the Nigerian police and nothing more than that. And uh, so, so I wouldn't subscribe at this material time to what you are talking about. But uh, we, we, we are encouraging people to support the police in whatever way they can. And uh, that is why you see state governments coming out with uh, security arrangements to support the police. That one is okay. But until we have laws that will create state police or any other police, I would want to say that we now have a national police and that is what the law for this country provides. At least for now, Honorable Minister. Um, but the, the, I don't yeah. know what you would say to those who say, is that really working? For instance, you gave the figures the other time that we have about 350,000 policemen in the Nigeria Police Force as at now. The question I want to ask you right. is, how many do we have on the streets? Because right now we have, among those numbers, we have those who work in the offices, those who work as orderlies, to politicians, to uh, people who are statutory, st statutorily are supposed to have police officers assigned to them. Really, how many of them, how many of these 350,000 people are on the streets doing the actual police work, not assigned to banks, not assigned to politicians, not assigned to anyone? How many are on the streets doing the actual work of policing? You, you, you see, people sometimes people become agitated on issues that are not supposed to be like that. Uh, don't forget banks, uh, corporate organizations, and other individuals. Government also has responsibility to protect them and protect their properties. 
So don't forget, this is also a responsibility that is vested on the police. But uh, I want to see there are so many policemen on the streets. We have so many policemen on the streets. The num as, as much as what we can provide. You are aware that we're about 200 and uh, more than 200 million uh, Nigerians in this country. So, so the police cannot be everywhere. But we are trying as much as we can to provide what is available and to ensure that they do the needful to protect people, to protect their properties, and to ensure that they uh, pursue these criminalities to the best that they can do. You know, yes. you, when you speak about funding, uh, I think two IGs ago, they always talk about uh, not having enough funds, and then the funds approved for the police, not released, as to when do you... Is that still a problem? Because we hear governments at different times say, we have approved at least substantial amounts of money to the police. Do you still have that problem of funds being approved, not released? You see, to the best of my knowledge, whatever funds is approved for the police or any organization in this uh, government for that matter has always been released, has always been approved. Because Mr. President doesn't approve what he doesn't have. So we, we don't have that challenge of uh, approval without release. But what we are having is the insufficiency of the funds. You will all know the economic uh, downturn in this country, and not only in Nigeria, but in other countries of the world, we have this economic downturn. So Nigeria is not an exception. We are having these challenges of uh, uh, funding. Uh, fortunately for the police, we have this the police trust fund that has already been set up by Mr. President to augment what is being budgeted annually. And uh, the police trust fund has been generating funds for the purposes of re-equipping, retraining, and uh, providing the needed modern day technology to the police to ensure that uh, they perform better. Uh, I understand the budget of the police trust fund is is being approved very soon by the National Assembly and as most likely this week or next week. So by the time they have the money released or approved by the National Assembly, well, Nigerians will begin to see what we are doing, will begin to see the improvement and the provision of this equipment and the technology that it is required to fight crime and criminality. So uh, we, we, by and large we have the little funds that is available for us to operate, and this is what we are doing. Well, we, we've had complaints, I mean, from uh, some members, they get across the house behind the scenes, and they talk about them not being happy in the force in terms of the police welfare and the promotions. They say they have so many juniors that are being promoted over the seniors, and so it just breeds some sort of uh, dissatisfaction, and as such, they can't come up putting out their best out there. What do you say to that? You see, uh, let me use this opportunity to commend the Police Service Commission for what they are doing so far. Uh, I want to say that, uh, and I am very proud, that to, so far we have promoted, I think, over 4,000 policemen across the country, from the DIG to AIG, from, to CPs, and to all the rank and file. I think the Police Service Commission has done a lot and we need to commend them. There could be one or two cases of uh, uh, where you don't promote people who are due to be promoted for one reason or the other. But if we have such cases, we usually refer them to Police Service Commission for, for remedy. And uh, I'm not sure that I'm in, I have any other case like the one you are talking about in my hand. So if you have any, we are always ready to rectify these mistakes and uh, uh, the Police Service Commission is doing very well and I think the policemen generally in this country are satisfied with what they are doing. There could be few complaints here and there and that is human and we want these people to come up and tell us their problems. We'll be ready to listen to them. One wonders then, uh, Honorable Minister, if there is an anonymous reporting line through which these policemen that you talk about can
communicate because you know if you do it officially, they may never get the kind of um, response that they, they, they desire to get. But let me ask you about welfare. Well, my colleague Mark Ware asked you the other time about the NSARS protests, and you know at the heart of it was for the, and the genuine NSARS protesters. It was the welfare of the police. They believe that if the police are well taken care of, uh, there would be no need for any of them asking for bribes and all of those things, which begs the question, be, the, the, the space of challenge that the police has is quite wide, beginning from the training. You remember that years ago we had that documentary, that research done here, where we found out the way policemen were being trained and, of course, the circumstances in which they lived and still, some of them probably still live. How are you, first of all, what are those challenges you have noticed and noted about the welfare, the short force in the welfare of the police, and how has it been taken on board? You see, you are absolutely correct that uh, we have these challenges of welfare as far as the police are concerned. I'm aware of all these challenges and uh, we are determined more than ever before to ensure that we face these challenges head on. Uh, you see, there has been for some time now the police have not enjoyed these training programs that we are talking about. And uh, we are making efforts now to ensure that this is intensified. There are a few of them taking place, but we want to make sure that as many of our policemen benefit from these training programs. If you take, for example, the issue of residential accommodation for policemen, uh, the barracks in this country are in very serious state of dilapidation. I went to Lagos, I saw how some of these houses were dilapidated. I went to other states of the Federation and I have seen them and I know they require a lot of attention, they require a lot of funding. And uh, we are making arrangements with the police trust fund in place to ensure that we renovate, we don't only renovate, but we also build new houses for our policemen to get them fully accommodated, to get them have a better means of livelihood. In the area of uh, other welfare services, particularly the salary structure of the policemen, you are aware that Mr. President has given very clear directives for the salaries and the wages commission to come up with a new salary structure for the police so that they can have a better take home pay. I think uh, and I'm aware that the commission is seriously working on this and they are in, involving a lot of stakeholders in their discussions uh, to come up to assist them in coming up with a, an acceptable salary structure for the policemen in this country. So we are doing all what is needed to ensure that we improve the welfare of uh, the policemen in this country so as to ensure that they perform more effectively. Mm. Well, we'll be talking about how rapidly we need to move, you know, to ensure that we imbue the confidence that we need to put into our police that we're also looking uh, or that we're also concerned about yeah. their own welfare as well. In a moment, please stay with us. Mohamed Meigari Dingyadi, who is the Minister of Police Affairs, is still our guest this morning on Sunrise Daily. And we're talking about the police revamping the Nigeria police and internal security matters. What well, you were talking about um, increasing the confidence, it would seem, and the welfare of the Nigeria police. And you're talking about the challenges confronting you. I'm, I'm wondering, so initially, I mean, we've, we've mentioned the fact that your ministry was re-established. Right. It was scrapped for a reason, um, initially, I think. Some people felt that it was too heavy. It was sitting, it was weighing too heavy on the Nigeria police. How would you describe the cooperation between your ministry now and the current uh, leadership of the Nigeria Police Force? You see, uh, there, there were different perceptions. Different leaders have different perceptions to situations. At a time, Mr. President had to scrap it and merge the Minister of Interior. And uh, for some time, it was like that in the interior. But later on, he saw the need out of his desire to have better security in this country, he saw the need to re-establish the ministry, and so it was re-established. You will be surprised if I show you the clip of 
what happened in the ministry when I was brought in, in as the, the new minister, when I came in to take over. There were so many jubilations, so many policemen were shouting, were chanting, uh, Babao, 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 and a lot of them. So uh, they received us with uh, a lot of enthusiasm, with a lot of hope and desire for a change. And uh, that is why I started with a lot of vigor. To so, ensure so that could have come at the beginning, but I'm wondering yes, what's the current yes. relationship between... The relationship, yes, of the relationship. relationship has been very cordial. Yeah. They saw what we could do, they saw what we are doing, and they are giving us all the necessary support and cooperation to move forward. Mm. Yes. Because uh, I'm wondering, uh, yes. are you able to better canvas for, for, I don't know, you you yourself, you're also coping, you're also complaining about the fact that you barely have enough funds to run the ministry. No, no I'm, to I'm talking about the entire police. Yes. You know, when we first came in, you know, we came in in, in June, uh, middle of the year. Mm. So when the ministry was established, not only my ministry, like the, the few other ministries that were established together with us, they were not having uh, any budget for the 2019 budget. So we had to just rely on the take-up ground that were given to us. Mm. And uh, we managed with it to the end of the year. How are you able to canvas better? Because some people will say that it's, it, it is going to be very, very unlikely that we'll be able to earmark more money for the police because of the constraints that we're facing as a country. However, a lot of states do support the Nigeria police uh, through log provision of logistics, materials, equipment, and all whatnot. How are you able to coordinate? I, I don't know if you have any business in that. You know, some of this... Don the donations given by states to ensure that it is uh, let's say judiciously used or ensure that it is uh, it serves the purpose for which it is meant for. You, you, you see, uh, I must say that the governors in this country are doing very well. They have been very supportive. They are supporting the police in different ways. Many of them give vehicles. Some of them give financial support to the state commons uh, in their various states. So, so we must appreciate what they are doing. They are actually doing well. And you, like you saw during this NSAS protest, the governors were at the head of it. They were all out and ready to support the federal government in maintaining peace in their various states. So uh, we are getting a lot of support from the state government. But uh, let me say the federal government is also improving on its funding for the police. Uh, with the ministry now in place, where, where our budget is, is, is fairly all right for us, and uh, we're making sure that the budget of the police force continues to improve year by year. Mm. And that is in addition to what they are going to get from the police trust fund. Mr. President knows what he wants, and uh, he has set machinery in motion to achieve that. This police trust fund that he has set up is there to support the funding gap that is, has been there for some time. Mm -hmm. And the governors have uh, cooperated very well, Mr. President, by allowing these deductions, 0.05% uh, uh, of the federal uh, federation account allocation to the police trust fund. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're getting a reasonable The police trust money. fund is not exactly new. Uh, there was one that was headed no, before that, that, by that, Mr. Kenny Martins. I don't know if you know about no, that one. That, that one is, uh, is, is not a fully government-owned trust fund. It was uh, that group that were going around looking for donations from people. But this one is a fully government uh, establishment. They, 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 they are free to look for donations from people who are willing to give donations. People, they, they also have other sources of funding like uh, uh, taxes from the, the revenue the companies are generating, the interest they are generating. They also give us about 0.005% of the interest that they generate from their businesses. So uh, companies, state governments, and the individuals who are willing to contribute are also free to donate, contribute to the trust fund. So the trust fund is, is in existence as we speak. It's already in motion. Oh, very well, speak. very well. Very so well. Ha has the Nigeria police been able to access the funds in the trust fund? Oh, it's, it's the funds is in our hands. Mm -hmm. It's in the hands of the police trust how, fund. How much it, have we been able to raise so far? Do you have an idea? Well, uh, I think it's getting to over 80 billion naira now, so far. How is that? Uh, what needs do you think it will be able to meet immediately for the Nigeria you, police? You see, we don't have vehicles. That is a very clear problem. We don't have adequate vehicles. We don't have the 
needed equipment. Even the AK-47 that we have is not enough for the policemen in this country. And those are the basics. These are the basics, and we, we have to get ready to purchase them. And uh, we need these policemen to go for training. We need to renovate their houses. We need to renovate their offices. We need to pay them better salary, and uh, these kind of things. And we need to also support the modern day technology that is needed for them to operate. So, uh, like you, see, you know, like, Honorable uh, Minister, I, 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 I was waiting for you to come to that technology yes, because yes. I'm looking at the fact that, you know, even the basics were struggling. Yeah. Uh, the fact that our policemen do not have enough guns yeah. is a problem. They don't have the vehicles to move around. Or even when they close some work, where they're going to stay with their families is dilapidated. Right. You know, the issues are many. Uh, and we have just 80 billion in, in, in a police trust fund which we're looking to, to help resuscitate some of those things. So the first thing that came to mind is where are we going to now get the funds for the technology in which we should be investing uh, to meet up with the nature of sophisticated crimes like we're currently facing? For instance, kidnapping. A lot of people do not have confidence uh, when a loved one is kidnapped uh, to go to the police anymore. They oftentimes, even when they bother to go, they are told, you know, go and go and make peace with the kidnappers. You, you see, uh, I agree with you. Some of these things are really very challenging, but but we are moving forward. Like you are aware that with this uh, 470 million uh, CCTV project that has been abandoned. Mr. President has now given us the go-ahead to resuscitate the project. And we have already entered into a concession agreement with uh, MPS Technologies. They are there trying to refix the entire system, to resuscitate it, to empower it, and to ensure that they make the business to generate revenue that will pay this loan and give some revenue into the government corpus. So by the time this system is put in place, we will have a lot of... Uh, uh, technology to manage some of this crisis and uh, particularly issue of inside, issue of uh, this kidnapping will we, we, we'll go a long way in ensuring that we reduce the number of kidnapping that is taking place in this country. The CCTV which you're talking about is for city centers, right? It's like Abuja. It's, it's, it's not going it's, to be on major highways, is it? It's going to be on major highways in all the city centers, in all the states of the Federation. It's everywhere in this country. What we know the challenges uh, facing that sort of project. That's, that is what we are doing now. We are facing the challenges. We are trying to resuscitate it. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this company has already gone into action to ensure that they purchase the needed equipment that has been, that has been either dilapidated or vandalized. So, so I if I hear you clearly, what you're saying is that the way forward is public-private partnerships. Right. On this very project, yes. On this very project, yes. is there any more that we're looking forward to uh, with the Nigeria police? Well, we are looking into quite a number of them, and we are willing to partner with anybody who is coming with any cogent idea that is going to support the intelligence of the police. Mm. Uh, like this issue of uh, police we are talking about that we are giving to individuals, groups, and organizations. We are trying to ensure that we put a machinery in motion to digitalize this process so that you can, in your house, if you want a police officer, you can uh, go online and apply and request and pay for it. And there you are, you get the police service. Because mm. we realize that people need these services, particularly in the wake of this kind of security challenge that we have in this country. Mm. So, 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 so. I, I'm wondering, I mean, some people are, and I'm not, I'm not the only one wondering, I, yes. we saw what happened in Lagos or, over the weekend, uh, the Nigeria police was deployed to the, uh, to the Lekito, and a lot of people were, yes, there were issues, and I'll, I'll have you address some of that in a moment, and there are the allegations raised, we even saw that on camera, exactly. in terms of how the police handled the situation. But it was anything that stood out for a lot of people. It was that the police that were sent there, uh, you know, had vehicles, and they were well kitted. Uh, you would seem to, to quell, assuming there was going to be a real protest, you know, they were dressed and prepared to quell such a protest. And they've, they've wondered, well, what will it take for Nigeria police, at least across the country, to be able to uh, be prepared in such a manner? 
that we saw yeah, in see, Lagos. Th this is the kind of thing that we wanted to take place in any situation that we find ourselves. Like what you saw in Lekki, this is how it is supposed to be. They were fully equipped, they are fully well uniformed, and uh, they, were, they are ready for the uh, NSAS protest, for the people who are protesting and looking. And that's why we were able to contain the situation. There was no much force that was used. No, no, there was, so. oh, no, so, but said there was a lot of force that was no, used. No, minimum force. Uh, was from, used, the, from the visuals that we saw and yes. from the experience of those who were. Uh, you know, who you have see, people people their always audio. say that the police use force. The police use force. But you see, you, you forget the fact that for you to ask somebody to please move this side, please be orderly, you have to use some level of force. You have to use some minimum level of force to ensure that people comply with what you are saying. There have been allegations. I'm not talking about shooting, I'm not talking about tear gas, and I'm talking about even you, you have seen some people have to, you know, hug some people to come and go into the. Uh, this are uh, ambulance at this marina and the rest of them. Mm. So, yeah, indeed, I mean, they're showing visuals now of yes. how the police were kitted uh, exactly. for, for the, I mean, assuming there was going to be a protest on that particular day. And, you know, some people say, oh, this is how a police force should look. However, you know, whether or not they did not go over their remit is another kettle of fish because there have been allegations that the police went overboard, uh, you know, picking people who had absolutely nothing to do with protests. And no. in, in many cases, yeah. this, this, let is me it, finish. It, These are the allegations that have come up. And, and I'm, I'm hoping that instead of just denying so, that it was something no, you look, no, you no, look what, into. What I'm saying, yes, we're looking into them, but the issue is, how would the police arrest you if you are not part of a situation? Why would they see you to arrest you? What, what situation you was home? here that hmm? was degenerated? When you are not in Lakey, why would they arrest you? They cannot pursue people on the street to arrest them. So, so uh, what was said, Lakey is not a place for protest. There are specific areas that were assigned or designated as areas for protests. We agree that uh, protests should be conducted when the need arises. But we cannot be protesting everywhere at all times. We have to have specific locations where this process should be conducted. And they have to be orderly, they have to be reasonable, they have to be with some minimum sense of nationality so that uh, we don't just allow every protest to take place uh, for just no cause. Mm. Well, what I'm hoping, uh, mm. and I'm sure a lot of Nigerians will be hoping, because there are members of the panel sitting in Lake also have now review their membership of the Lagos Judicial Panel. I remember that one of the prominent people who had given a dissenting opinion, uh, uh, Mr. Ebuade Borua, um, says he's still in talks with the uh, CSO, which, which is a member of um, an NSAS protester who is, is on the panel. That, 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 that was honorable of him to do so because yeah. uh, he was just only the one out of the four members of the panel that ruled in favor of the Lagos State Government. So, so, so it was a real court ruling that the police were trying to enforce. He didn't rule in favor. He dissented. He dissented, yes. Only yes. one dissenting voice. He's, he's not the only dissenting oh, voice. There were three one. dissenting four, four, voices. No, four, four out of five. There were three dissenting voices, Honorable Minister. Oh, what is important is the majority has ruled. And he, he stood at the ground and, rules. Anyways. So, so, so the majority uh, has the, ruled. The point I'm uh, trying to make is mm. that the grounds upon which he says he's going to live was upon the grounds of gross human rights abuses, which we saw on on television, you know, and, and has gone round in many media clips. So there are those who have alleged that they were stripped naked and when they were taken to, when they were taken by the police. That's definitely not one of the you things see, that the police see, should it, be doing. It was, it was the tribunal, it was the panel that said, that place should be handed over to Lagos State Government for renovation. And uh, what the police was doing was just to ensure that that decision of the court, a legally constituted court for that matter, was enforced. And uh, th th that's where we are. Uh, so, so it's for them, the members of the tribunal, to decide what to do because in most cases these judgments are like this. Uh, but but always the, the majority carries the day. Let's go back to Lagos now. Yes. Ayo has a question for yes. you. Well, 
Your uh, Honorable Minister, one of the things that a number of people want to ask you is, uh, there are so many police cells uh, that a number of people will point you to when you say that if you aren't, and, uh, that the police doesn't just arrest people. They have done a good number of times what they just what they call police rounding up. They just round up people suspected to look suspicious, so to speak. Uh, a good reference has been made so many times to things like that happening in Agege, in Lagos here, and so many other places like that. Uh, how do you address such issues? You see, legally, the police have the right to arrest any person they suspect to be of other dubious character or to have misconduct, misconducted himself. Like uh, every other individual has the right to suspect anybody. So uh, we, we, we are watching, we are observing, we are monitoring what the police are doing as far as these issues are concerned. And uh, we, have, we are creating a platform for Nigerians to put up complaints on the misdeeds of the police direct to the Ministry of Police Affairs. And this, uh, we have set up a committee that will handle these issues, uh, any complaints that is coming from the general public, so that it's, it's going to be all inclusive. Uh, we, are, we intend to listen more effectively to Nigerians as far as the issue of misconduct of police are concerned. So, uh, but that would, does not mean that we will discourage policemen from uh, suspecting people from misconducting themselves and uh, by the time they arrest you you go to the police station if you clear yourself they allow you to go if you don't then you answer the questions so that's that's how it is and that's how it should be okay just one more thing from here um uh, right. I'm not, th these allegations are not new uh, you might have heard them several times but they have resurfaced again and it's such that uh, people keep saying and then you perhaps, I don't know if it's part of what you were alluding to when you were speaking about police being overstretched, their capacity needs to improve, they need to employ more men. Uh, but in terms of police prosecution of suspects, many are complaining that the police are not prosecuting criminal elements. For instance, I mean, cattle rustlers, uh, criminal herders who give them a bad name. And so that, they say, is part of what is fueling the mistrust that people have with police particularly? You see, government is trying all that it can to ensure that uh, the police in this country earn the confidence of Nigerians. That is, that is an important task which we must do. The Nigerians have to have confidence on the police who are working for them, and it is very, very important. Uh, we are doing our best to ensure that we mobilize Nigerians to have confidence in the police because policemen are there to work for you, to protect you and your property, and they need your support and cooperation. They also need your understanding to ensure that they perform the jobs that they are assigned to do for Nigerians. Without this support, without this understanding, without the confidence, there is there's no way they can perform creatively to ensure that they maintain uh, security of lives and property in the country. We are aware of all the complaints that people are talking about, and we're addressing them as they come. Uh, because uh, we are watching the, the system, the operation is there, the system is there to ensure that we check and we know and we take action on all the issues that are brought to us as far as the issues of misdeed of policemen are concerned. So we are aware, but we are doing, we are addressing these issues as they arise. Well, Honorable Minister, we have to thank you for your time. Internal security is an ongoing matter, especially with regards to what is currently going on, right. from a herders crisis, uh, you know, insecurity, many parts, kidnapping, banditry, even Boko Haram. The Nigerian army is saying, when we win back territory, we want the police to be able to stay there and hold ground for us. Right. We're hoping that, you know, in the coming days, you'll be able to visit Nigerians more frequently and <laughs> update them on the activities of your yes. ministry. Thank but we you have to much. thank you for coming on Sunrise Daily this thank morning. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.
Mohamed Megeri Dingyadi is the Minister of Police Affairs and is speaking to us here in our Abuja studios. Sunrise Deliverance New in a moment. Please stay with us.